Although I'm a queen of just a few years of drag, I have many years of performance experience, so you better get ready because I'm about to, uh, I'm about to shows on these hosts. My name is Denali. I am 28 years old and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Denali in its native language means the great one, so done, finished, period. My drag is definitely of the elements. It's of the earth, it's of the environment. I grew up in Alaska in an untouched land, so I'm very much inspired by nature, ice and the cold, and things of the winter and the Arctic and whatnot. But at the same time, it's very elevated, couture, high fashion. When I was a figure skater growing up, I always had the dream of going to the Olympics. And when I discovered drag, I was like, this is another way that I can still make it to the Olympics. Drag for me is an opportunity to take every single part of me and combining them into one character and just presenting that to the world in the most outrageous and beautiful and loud form. My reputation, especially in my city, is the performance girl. She's here to kick, she's here to buck, she's here to spin, she's here to flip, she's here to literally gag you left, right, center, forward, full gaggery. I would say that I'm pretty well-rounded and humble, you know? I've been doing drag for two and a half years. I worked my ass off, hustled through my city, so it was a fast come up. I felt like I was ready to audition and I guess I was. Bing! Aki soy! I am the first Alaskan queen to ever come into the workroom on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I am one of the few ice skaters, there was one, there was milk, but I'm one of the few backflipping ice skaters. <laughs> I'm one of the few like high trick stunt queens for sure to come through Drag Race, so y'all better watch out. When I'm working, I'm in my zone. If there is a lot of commotion, I tend to block it out. Again, that's the skater in me, that's the competitor in me. I put the blinders up, but if we're kikiing, if we're doing whatnot, I'ma be right up there with everybody else. Match that energy. I grew up not only with knives on my feet all the time, but I'm also a third degree black belt in martial arts. So if you do come for me, watch out. And there goes my nail. Ah! Do we have some nail glue? I mean, I'll take a hot glue gun. A misconception about me is that uh, because I'm a good performer, I'm not good in the other areas of drag, you know, so like maybe acting or whatnot. I'm not gonna lie, Snatch Game scares the hell out of me. I'm a classically trained athlete, not a classically trained actress. So I'm a little nervy pervy about that. Regardless of how many years of drag I have underneath me, I know how to slay a competition. If I have to lip sync, I just feel really, really bad for the other girl. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. To be on this platform is the greatest honor. To be part of LGBTQ history and to be able to showcase myself to those other kids and inspire them in the same sort of way, as cheesy as it sounds, that's literally the dream because it's exactly what happened to me. I looked up to the divas and now I am a diva. I am America's next drag superstar because I absolutely came to win. Give it, give it, right here, ready. I mean, if you didn't come here to win and compete, like, why are you here? You can buy Instagram followers. <laughs>my name is Elliot with two T's. I am 27, ugh, I already f***ed up. I am 26 years old and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been doing drag for 12 years, so I'm glad it's finally paid off. <laughs> when it comes to my drag, as a queen, I consider myself kind of like a high-end housewife meets Jennifer Lopez, more corporate. I like to do corporate and commercial and elevate what drag is. I wanna make it bigger because I want everyone to be able to see me. <laughs> the first thing people associate with me in drag is a blonde dancer who can kick herself in the face. <laughs> Performing is my favorite part of drag. I hate getting ready. I hate doing my makeup, but my favorite part of the entire evening is being able to perform and dance because that's where my heart and soul is. A huge misconception about me is that I'm unapproachable and that I'm kind of cold. I'm goofy. I love to laugh. I love to be stupid. Like a lot of people, they seem to feel a type of way about me because of the way I present myself, but I'm a ballet dancer. I can't help it. <laughs> I have to walk into a room like this. I'm not gonna sit like this. I can't help it. I've been waiting for this since I was five years old. <laughs> this 
was my third time auditioning, but it was the first time that I ever could watch my tape back and actually see me and not cringe. So I felt like my genuine self and I felt like it was my time. Third time's a charm. The thing I'm most nervous about is being secluded with a bunch of other girls. I've always kind of been, you know, to myself and show up, do my job and go home. And so it's gonna be really interesting trying to interact with so many other big personalities. I respond to conflict by just l hearing them out because their words really don't mean anything to me. <laughs> so I let them, you know, waste their breath and then I go about my day. <laughs> I've worked with Rue Girls all over the place for the last 10 years, so it's incredible to finally be able to consider myself part of the family. I'm looking forward to choreography because that is where I thrive and I know so many of these girls don't. <laughs> Drag queens do not require a workbook or a handbook, they just show up. Being on this show really just melts my heart because I have felt overlooked my whole life. I have felt dismissed my whole life. I feel like I was never taken seriously as a queen ever in either any city that I've ever lived in. And so this really completely validates me. From the moment I walked in, this validates me 100% and I could not have asked for anything else. I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because I put the work in, I put the years in, I have trained with the best in the world, I've worked with the best in the world, and I'm here, I'm ready, I'm in it to win it, let's go! <laughs> yeah. Can you like push down the coat so you don't see it? I like when this is the top of the silhouette. That's the top? Okay. Yeah. Oh yes, cool. stunning. Love it. I need to be the first trans winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, period. Hi, I'm Got Mick. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Los Angeles, California. People always think it's Got Milk, which it's obviously supposed to look like that, but I really didn't know how easy it was for people to just automatically think it was milk. And I feel like I'm correcting all the time. Got Mick, Mick, whatever you want. I'll turn around to anything. Don't Google it, please. <laughs> I moved to LA originally to go to fashion school and then my makeup career just kind of took off weirdly unexpectedly and I never really looked back. It's definitely different painting myself than other people. Sometimes I forget, especially if I'm in a rush and I'll literally like grab someone's head and like shove them. And I'm like, oh shit. I think the biggest misconception about me is that I can only do makeup. People are like, oh, I've seen their makeup, but what else, baby? I like to play with gender a lot. I'll still draw on a mustache sometimes. I love to look like a weird alien freak thing. Kind of a pinup-y, structured silhouette. Very edgy and punk. I always have like a very pencil brow. And I switch the crease up a little bit, so that's where I get ya. I'm so versatile with my eye shape. People think I am very intimidating, especially the way I just paint on my face. Even if I'm being nice, it's very... Mm-hmm. Yes, loves it. Thank you. The more and more I got comfortable with my gender identity, the more I got to play with the drag got mix side. And now that it's like solely my art, it's just the best thing in the world. And I don't even remember what the question was, but I love it. <laughs> it's so important for me to represent LA this season. The crown hasn't come home to LA since Raja. I love Raja with all my heart. She's one of my biggest drag inspirations of life. So the fact that I could possibly be the next angel to bring home the crown to Los Angeles is crazy to me. And I think people are gonna be really surprised just by how competitive I am, but also how I really don't give a in my life. Not giving a f is almost the way that I deal with stress. It's just like sitting down and I'm like, whatever you guys, why are you even stressed out? It's fine. Like just calming everyone down around me so I don't freak out too. Calm it down, I'm calm. Shh, shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy. It means so much for me to be on the show right now, especially being a trans guy going in, a feminine perspective of a trans guy. The trans movement is getting so big, so powerful, so strong. I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because I'm ready to get on this show, try to win this crown from my community, and now we just have to crown it and call it a day. <laughs> I'm very competitive, but I'm like sportsman-like. I'm a, I'm a good loser and I'm a great winner. I f came to win, why would you not? Girls would kill to be here and if you didn't come to win, like shame on you.
My name is Joey J. I am 30 years old and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. My drag name is Joey J because I'm very lazy. I don't have a drag name. I don't wear wigs. I'm very complacent. I like to sleep in and it's just like the mood. I'm just kidding. I am like the lipstick lesbian of Phoenix. Definitely more masculine when I'm in drag <laughs> compared to when I'm out. I'm such like a sissy little white boy out of drag. But when I get into drag, I want to be like a powerhouse. I want to drive my motorcycle. I just finished having a threesome with Angelina and Brad Pitt. It's a whole moment. When I very first started doing drag, I got so much for not wearing a wig. They're like, these are the rules of drag. This isn't good drag. You can't do drag like that. And I'm one of those people who's like, tell me I can't do something and I'm gonna make you buy it at the end of the day. And I took it and I ran with it and I love it. When they hear my name, they go, bitch, put a wig on. But that's why I'm here and they're not. So it worked out really well. I'm not concerned about being around queens with big personalities because I brought a bunch of marbles. I'm just gonna throw them and just watch happen. The biggest misconception about me is, um, you know, I don't know, because the people who talk behind your back are behind you. I just do me. What does it mean to be on Drag Race? I am so honored. Like, your question just gave me goosebumps. It is so, like, validating. I've been working so hard on my drag. I know it's different. I know it's a little bit more unique. I've been picked on it for so long. I took that and I got on RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul said, you're the tea, you got the job, congratulations. And I'm like, let's do it. This was my third time auditioning. And actually, the first time I auditioned was like two months after I started painting my face. Cause I was like, I know I wanna get on this show. I know I'm busted. Let's audition just to kind of go through the motions so that when I'm not busted, I know what's up. RuPaul's Drag Race has never had a queen like me. I'm a powered little spoon, verse tippity top, bibbity bottom. I can do it all. Y'all have never had it. And now you're gonna get it. I knew going into the show that not wearing a wig was gonna be a thing. I mean, like, if I didn't know, I'd be an idiot. Definitely different, it definitely stands out, but I just shared my truth. I said, you know, your drag is your drag, my drag is my drag, and that's the beauty of it. And I do plan on changing it up a little bit for you guys, but I want you to see genuine Joey J right off the bat, you know? I am America's next drag superstar because bitch, look. You have never had this, you know? I wanna be a trailblazer for some of the weirdos out there, but I still wanna be a little bit still a little bit fishy. That's my nod to Candy. Candy's always like, bitch, that's People like to call me like a legend in the Chicago drag scene. I don't know why, but you know, I will take it. I'd rather be called a legend than like a bitch or a skank. So, hey, I will take it. <laughs> I'm a legendary hoe and skank, yes. Hi everybody, it's Kat Mora Hall, the Mackie doll. I'm 28 years old from Chicago, Illinois. Well, let's see, so when I started drag like eight years ago, Kimora Lee Simmons was really popular at the time, but I was like, I want to change up the spelling, make it more unique, so that's why I'm Kamora, not Kimora. Get it right. Kamora is the diva. Like, she is a high-maintenance woman. Like, she is just as glamorous, luxurious housewife. The only thing she cares about is, what am I going to buy next, and what am I going to wear next? Like, Kamora Hall style is Glitz and glam, the razzle dazzle, shine and sparkle never go out of style. Me, I'm more of a classic drag queen when it comes to performing. I like to do a power ballad. I'm a park and bark on a bitch. Like, you're not gonna be seeing me doing like kicks and flips and like splits. Like, that's just not me. Like, I'm Kamora Hall. I don't need to do all of that. I don't really consider myself a look queen. Cause when I think of look queen, I think of more like high fashion. To me, I'm just more of a glamour queen. I just really like sparkly things. Like sometimes to the point where it's really gaudy and campy. The biggest misconception about me is that I'm a pageant queen. I'm not a pageant girl, even though like everyone in my family has done pageants. That's just because in my delusional world, I'm already a beauty queen winner. What I love about drag is that it's just so empowering to me because like just growing up, I've been made fun of for just being like too gay, too feminine, 
foot in drag, those are positive qualities. And I just hope that by being my most authentic self, by doing how I want to do drag, I can like empower other people to do the same. Now that was a pageant answer. <laughs> <laughs>
I gained 20 pounds during the pandemic, okay? And I will probably have worked out a little bit more in 2020 because I feel thick. Thickly, but thick. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lala Ree. I am 30 years of age and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. The or the or <laughs> the origin of my uh, the orgy. This is my third year of doing drag. I'm kind of still a baby, quote unquote, to some of the girls, but you gotta watch out, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna make you watch me. Like, Lala Ree makes you watch her. Like, you're gonna enjoy her. You're gonna look at her and you're gonna get into her. And this is her moment and you're gonna accept it. I'm a leotard girl, I'm a show girl. I love to dance, I love to entertain. I have a little edge appeal to me, a little sex appeal. You know, give them a little leg, a little ass, a little breast. Everybody knows me for being the girl that's gonna give you a show when she's the stage. She's gonna give you choreography, she's gonna give you moments, sex, all of that. My fashion style is very colorful. Um, I used to be very dark. They say black make you look slimmy, and I wanted to look real skinny but I kind of like stepped away from that. I love to show off these nice slits because I work hard for them. This nice padded ass, because I work hard for that too by paying for it. I feel like being a dancer gives me a leg up. You would much rather see a girl twirl than a girl to stand. At least I would. The misconception about me is that I can only dance to put on a show. But girl, I am a girl of many talents. I am a girl of many stunts and shows, honey. She does not have to do a split to entertain you, darling. I think I'm most nervous about sewing. <laughs> I know I am nervous about so I'm not the sewing kind of girl. I know this is season 13 and you know, wah, wah, wah. I tried to learn before I came, but it really didn't work out. So we're gonna see how this sewing challenge go, girl. <sighs> I've been watching this show since the first season ago. Shout out to BB Zara. And I've always wanted to be on the show, but I was like, they would never pick me. Like, especially me doing direct for three years, I was like, they would never pick me. But I was like, let me just give it a shot, because you never know. Like, Valentina was in for like a year and she got on. I told myself in 2019 that I was going to get on Drag Race. I auditioned, and here I am. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I didn't feel ready. <laughs> no, I didn't feel ready at all, but I still did it. <laughs> to be on Drag Race is like the ultimate blessing. <laughs> like this is like the Olympics of drag. Like every drag girl that I know wants this moment. It's just, it's really surreal and it's really mind blowing. And I don't think I fully realized that I am on Drag Race season 13. Like I don't think it really has hit me yet. What I think is going to surprise people um, the most about me on the show is my fashion. Cause I really took my fashion game up for these runways, honey. It's more than just Leah Taurus now, girl. So we gonna show you a little sham sham. Why am I America's Next Dress Superstar? Because I feel like I have the full package. I am everybody's favorite homegirl. I like to say that, like I'm very approachable. I'm very relatable to people. Um, I have style, I have grace. I am a sickening performer. I'm gonna give America what they need, girl. I guess, of course I came to win. I didn't come this far just uh, to lose and go home. Ciao, bye. There is something about going out and drag and just feeling a full fantasy. Men's is coming up to you and being like, there's just something about that, you know? Hi, I'm Olivia Lux. I'm 26 years old from Brooklyn, New York. Olivia comes from Olivia Pope from Scandal. Fierce black woman, leading lady. Lux comes from the Latin word for light because I what? light up every single room I walk into. I'm originally from Jersey. I packed up all my bags and I moved to New York. Michelle Visage found out I was from New Jersey. Jersey sisters in the house. Olivia Lux has a lot of components that make up a great performer. She's fun, she can do a few twirls, sing, act, dance. She's so tree. She's a little bit of whimsical. She gives a full on fantasy. My fashion is bright. It has a lot of little stones, sparkling. I love 
big showgirls. You know, the sequins and the bodysuits, big silhouettes, the big, big pretty dresses, and the big hair. A lot of what I do is for the stage. And I love to play piano at my shows because it's such an intimate moment where I get to like do a little music and play the little piano for everybody. I was that little kid. I would give little productions for my family. I would turn off the light and that was a blackout. You know what I mean? RuPaul's Drag Race is such a big platform. I felt like it was such a huge accomplishment. I walk in and I see Rose, Candy, Tina Burner. These are drag legends in New York City. And I am a fetus of drag. The year prior, I hadn't even been doing drag. <laughs> I only auditioned once. It just feels really validating. <laughs> Being a baby queen, I'm a little newer. That may be challenging for me in this because this is the Olympics of drag. If one of the other girls thinks I'm not up to par, I'm not old enough, I would say I only really ever play games and things to win. There's definitely a competitor in me. I do take the side, though, of a fair competitor. I'm not ripping off my necklace and throwing the pearls on the ground. I'm just gonna let you fall by yourself. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at what I can bring to the table. Although I'm a younger queen, don't underestimate me. I may have a few things underneath this stoned glove. <laughs> I am America's Next Drag Superstar because I have the, okay, this is, everybody says charisma, uniqueness, never talent. But I do, I really, really do. And not only that, I feel like I bring it in a different way. I bring it in a different light. I'm here to grow and learn, and I'm gonna grow right into that crown. Everybody today has been asking me if I'm the trade of the season, which makes me think that maybe I am. Or maybe I'm not, since they're all asking me, they don't already know. I think that Gomic is the trade of the season, hands down. But feet down, it's me. <laughs> I'm Rosé, I am 31 years old, and I live in New York City. I chose my drag name because I absolutely love rosé wine. Pink is my favorite color. It's always been my favorite color since I was a little boy, but I was never really able to wear it. When I started doing drag, it just became this like pink explosion. I am the quintessential New York showgirl. I'm always on stage, singing, dancing, acting. I consider myself a comedy queen. I'm really camp, but I'm also like very glamorous. I take a lot of inspiration as an entertainer from vocalists who give electrifying live performances people who know how to move, like Beyonce and Celine Dion. I'm also a huge Barbra Streisand fan. <laughs> Some of that pop culture is really dated. My parents really, really supported me and helped me get a vast education in music and in theater and in dance. I wanted to be a professional actor and I wanted to be on Broadway. I worked a little bit, not on Broadway. I lived on Broadway at the street. Almost, I still do. I started drag much later than most drag queens start, and I already had a really solid sense of who I was before I became the queen. I came up really quickly in the scene, and I think a misconception is that I don't deserve what I've achieved, because I didn't have to go the very treacherous Frodo, Lord of the Rings to Mount Doom route that most queens had to, but I worked very hard, and I'm proud of that. Being cast on Drag Race means the world to me. It's my favorite TV show. I've idolized RuPaul since I was a little boy. It's crazy to stand before someone and try to impress them and be judged by them, especially if they don't like it. Oh my God, stay tuned. There is a bit of a pressure to uphold the level that New York queens usually bring to the show. The thing that makes me the most nervous about Drag Race is just upholding my own standards. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so letting go of that to have more fun is definitely gonna be something I'll struggle with. I tend to really thrive in smaller groups. With all these giant personalities coming from all over America, it's gonna be tough. If a queen comes for me and wants to fight, I'm gonna say, hey, baby, let's go outside smoke a little cigarette and make out for a while instead. I have lots of friends, so I would hope that most people who had something to say about me would say something lovely. <laughs> but you never know, because um, there's some bitches out there. Hopefully I won't have to deal with that too much. <laughs> this is my second year auditioning. I remember Jan told me that she got on to Drag Race. <laughs> So pissed. <laughs> we were like, oh my god, yeah, good. I'm gonna help you. But then I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> 
I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because in this day and age, people who are appointed as leaders, people who get a lot of attention and who win things, they need to have a really solid, concrete grasp on what's happening in the world and they need to positively generate energy to help the greater good. And that is my number one interest. We have to remember to breathe and laugh as well. That's what I'm good at. So I think that I'm a great f***ing candidate to be America's Next Track Superstar. We wouldn't have come if I didn't come to win. <laughs>
like a lot of people want to have on what Beyonce has on. I'm a trendsetter. So even if I like what Beyonce has on, I have to take it to the next level. So you come into the Tamisha Iman show, you don't really know what you're gonna get. It will be an experience. It's always an experience. I try to leave you with something you wouldn't expect. I try to not become complacent or repetitious. I wanna be different, but you was gonna appreciate it, the fact that you was there and you witnessed that once in a lifetime performance. What makes me the most nervous about doing Drag Race is the fact that I have at least 30 years on the girls. In my prime, I could have taken on anyone. 30 years later, I can't do the things that I used to do. I'm smart enough to know how to still play the game and win. But nevertheless, I just wish the 25-year-old Tamisha would have signed up and got on the show. <laughs> Finding out that there were a fellow Atlanta girl on the show was kind of amazing, but to find out that it was my daughter, Lala Ree, that was really amazing, because you know we work in silence. So she was working, getting ready for the show, and I was working, getting ready for the show, so neither one of us had the opportunity to speak on it, and it was just amazing to get there, and I was so proud because she started in the game, what, two years ago? and look at you know her growth and what all she put into just getting to that point into being recognized that was amazing to me i wanted to audition for the show because like i stated i've been in the game 30 years and it's cute that the local people know of the journey but i felt that to create a legacy i needed the world to see my journey so they could respect the legacy i am america's next dress superstar because i'm a total package I have been auditioning. Oh God, I don't know. I think I've auditioned more than I've had sex in my life. I'm gonna lie, actually. I'm gonna say I've auditioned once. Hi, I'm Tina Burner. I am 39 and feeling fine from New York City. Tina Burner comes from Tina Turner, okay? So Tina Turner is a legend, an icon. She what? She's a phoenix. She rose from the ashes. It is fire. Tina Burner, turn it and burn it. That's me, thank you. I'm a legend with legs. Tina Burner is a monster. I'm nine foot tall, you know? I'm a linebacker in a dress. You know, if you saw this walking down the street at 3 a.m. and you were in an alley, you'd probably run. You'd be scared. You ain't gonna mess with me. I've been doing drag since I put on my mother's dress for Halloween in third grade. Yeah, I'm the more seasoned. I mean, there's children. There's children, and then there's me. So basically, I'm the babysitter, or the dad, as everyone likes to call me. You know, in my drag career, I was raised on like respect and like putting the work in, and then you got these new girls coming up, doing drag for a day, and all of a sudden, they're a star. I'm here to tell them, no, baby, sit down. It's all about the performance for me. I'm not like, the fashion is great, do your makeup tutorials, live your life, but hey, honey, it's all about the performance. That's what drag is. I explain my fashion style as questionable. I'm a comedy costume clown. I love, I love drag. You know what I'm saying? Like some of these girls want to look like, you know, fashion models and like pretty little women. I want to look like I'm doing drag. I love big hair. I love big dresses, like stupid drag. Like I'm into that. I want to put on a show. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Finally making it on RuPaul's Drag Race is like, I cried on my toilet. Do you know what I mean? I cried on my toilet when I got that call. Now that is a lot because I'm usually busy on the toilet, but I was crying too. So I was like multitasking. This is going to be a crazy time on the show, but somebody's got to drive the bus. You know what I'm saying? We have passengers and we have the bus driver. And that's me I'm driving the bus. People are like, mm, you'll never get on. And like comments online, it's just like, you know, RuPaul doesn't want you. And I said, hi. Why did I get on 13? Because it's unlucky. And bitches better beware, because you know what? I'm the ladder you're gonna walk under, you know? I'm the cracked mirror in your house, okay? I'm the black hat that's gonna pee on your sheets. It's me. I'm unlucky. It's the biggest competition for drag in the world. I am a competition horse, okay? I'm here to run the track. That's what we're doing. I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because 
That's a very good question. I think about it all the time, you know? I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because you need someone who's gonna get this together. You need somebody who's gonna push people out of the way and get our country back together. And that is why I'm America's Next Drag Superstar because we are stronger as a community than we are as a nation. I'm Tina Burner, season 13. Thank you so much. Love my answer. Utica is kooky, quite the kook, very kook, much kook, so kooky, and I am also a little bit spooky, so I do the spooky as well as the kooky. That was a lot of words, so many words. <laughs>